these symbols changed physics, and they were first used in a three-page article 85 years ago by Paul A. M. Dirac. Let me introduce you to bra ket notation. At first, it seems pretty uninspired, a symbol, a letter, or a word shoved between a vertical bar and an angled bracket. But the idea underlying the notation is what made it become ubiquitous in quantum mechanics classrooms. See, a quantum system is described by what's called a state vector. This isn't a vector in the standard physical sense. It doesn't typically describe a position or a velocity. Rather, we describe a quantum system by a vector because quantum mechanics is, fundamentally, a theory of linear operations. For those not in the know, a linear operation in this context is often a measurement. And what it means to be a linear operation is that if you apply that operation to one state, you get another state. And furthermore, you could equally well apply it to a sum of two states, and your result will be the sum of the operation on each of the two states. In the case of a measurement, the resulting state will be the sum of the original states weighted by their measurement values, as if the measurement operation occurred on each piece separately. So a theory of linear operations is neatly described as a theory of vectors representing the states and matrices representing the operators. So now we have vectors, but in order to concretely notate vectors in a traditional way, we need a basis. For example, to describe a position vector in three dimensions, you might say move this much in the x direction, this much in the y direction, and this much in the z direction. So the basis here is the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. Alternatively, you could point in a certain direction specified by two angles and then move a certain distance. Then the basis is made of the two angular directions and the outward direction. But regardless of the basis you use, you're describing the same vector. It's just that sometimes it's useful to use one basis and sometimes it's useful to use another. So Dirac's new notation abstracted away the basis. You can just put a name for the state, say, psi, in a ket, the vertical bar and the right-angled bracket. And if you want to know how much your state aligns with a particular basis vector, this is notated simply by juxtaposing the state ket with the basis vector bra. This then corresponds to a number that can be calculated explicitly if desired. Alternatively, we can talk about basis kets and express a wave function as a sum of basis kets. Then we can convert it to any other basis simply by juxtaposing with another set of basis bras. Essentially, without writing out gigantic, potentially infinite dimensional column vectors, we can use Dirac's notation to still perform manipulations. As such, the introduction of this notation was akin to the introduction of Penrose's abstract index notation in general relativity. It changed the game and made lengthy calculations quick and explicit. And that's why 